Today starts a bespoke keyboard build for the channel, but before we get into it, a little bit of a story of how we got here in the first place. Some time ago, I built a Switch Couture Alice stacked acrylic keyboard for my wife. It wasn't a particularly fancy model, but she wanted to try out the layout because Alice keyboards look really appealing to her, and as it turns out, we both ended up falling in love with that keyboard. So when I decided I wanted to build one for myself, I didn't necessarily want to go with Switch Couture as my brand. I wanted to branch out and try something a little bit different. I ended up landing on SM Keyboards as my vendor of choice. Not only was I a huge fan of the selection of options available for their stacked acrylic cases, but they also had Alice boards available. On top of that, they specifically mentioned that it can use any Sneakbox PCB. Seeing Sneakbox mentioned jogged my memory of an interesting looking keyboard that I saw a little while ago that Sneakbox makes called the Ava. It's functionally an Alice keyboard that has something a little different going on in the bottom, bottom right hand cluster of the keyboard. I of course had the money at the time to just buy an Ava and call it a day, but I wanted to do something a little bit differently and I saw that I was able to add individual PCBs for the Ava to my shopping cart on the Sneakbox website at the time. While the option is no longer available, I believe the original listing mentions something about limiting a certain number of extra PCBs per Ava customer. I wasn't an original Ava owner, so I reached out to Sneakbox to explain my situation and what I intended for the PCBs, and they said, sure, we can sell you a couple. And we did end up buying two PCBs of our own, because of course, my wife saw the design of this board and wanted to get one built for herself as well. And thanks to some behind the scenes magic on SM Keyboard's part, they were able to source the plate file for the keyboard, which was the last piece of the puzzle we needed to get this project started. Now, including the test fit board that SM Keyboards needed to make for themselves to ensure that everything was going to line up and fit correctly, there's technically only three of these boards in existence. And we are going to more closely document the construction of my board, but there are a few things I'm still waiting on. I am unfortunately waiting on Milky Way Voynich, which is the cap set we are going to be putting on this keyboard. But we can at least show you the rest of the parts that I do have in-house right now and get started on a bit of a project with the plate for my board. All right, so let's take a quick look at this board before I get the plate all mussed up. Again, this is based on the Sneakbox Ava PCB. Huge shout out and thank you to Sneakbox for allowing us to purchase these Ava PCBs to make the project happen. Now, this is a hot swap board, but it does allow you to have a little bit of flexibility with the layout, uh, mostly in that you can change which side of your spacebar cluster is the 2.25 or 2.75 U wide bar. You also get the option to solder in a rotary knob and I may actually do that with my board uh, still still mulling that over and if I solder in the switches I do also get access to a split backspace option which I may take advantage of because that means it's one less stabilizer for me to tune yay and just a quick note before we take a look at the case, we are using Divinity Oni Linears for this build. These are using Texi's HPE top and bottom housings along with a long palm stem. This is a linear switch and it normally comes with a 65 gram spring that actuates around like 43 or so. I have opted to switch that out for a 53 gram three stage Wuche spring. In doing so, I have made one of the most sensitive switches on the face of the planet. The stem fits very tightly in these housings, and as such, the switch is very hypersensitive to whether or not you lube the stem effectively. If you even slightly over lube the stem, you're gonna feel it with the switch. And having swapped to the 53 gram spring just exacerbated that a little bit more. So. While the rest of the switches that'll be going in the build are good to go, these I need to touch up a little bit more, but this is what you all really came here to see, the custom case proper. Now, again, this was manufactured by SM Keyboards, and we've got some interesting options at play here. The most obvious one being the plate. Now, I did a poll recently asking you all if you've ever used a copper plate for your keyboards, and the vast majority of you either have never done or just straight up didn't know that copper was an option. And while it's not a fairly common one to be used, it is one that SM Keyboards offers for their custom builds. Now, this is a sandblasted finish on the copper. 
It looks relatively clean, except for the couple of spots where I have touched it with my incredibly cursed hands. And I could clean that up and then seal the plate and it would remain looking pretty for the rest of eternity, but we won't be doing that. Other options I went with include, you can sort of see it down there, please focus. I went with a pour on plate foam option. I also selected glass green as my acrylic of choice for the entirety of the build. I could have gone with another accent layer just below the first one, but I like this full see-through uh, look. And then when the light hits it, you've got a little bit of that like pale greenish blue color going on. It's really classy looking. I like it a lot. And the cherry on top, or I guess blueberry in this case, is the blue hardware I selected. Really like this dark color of blue, and I'm really hoping that all of these colors come together to make the patina we're going to apply to this plate really pop. All right, so plate is removed from the board. I do want to make a quick note of something before we move on, however. This case shipped with the plate foam inside the case, but what ended up happening is the plate foam got stuck to the bottom layer of acrylic because it's got kind of a tackiness on the opposite side of this foam. Now, I was able to remove it without damaging the foam or marring the case, but you are going to want to be careful when you remove this because if you're a little rough with the foam, you might tear it while you're trying to unstick it from the case. All right, so we're trying something a little bit different with the patina this time. This was actually inspired by a patina that I saw recently. I can't remember exactly the build it was, but there were very specific striations that were created with the patina, and it looked as though they were being created by plastic wrap being set on top of the plate while the patina was happening. At least that's what it looked like to me. So. I'm not only experimenting with that, and this may end up backfiring on me. I'm not entirely sure uh, if this is going to just stifle the process entirely, but uh, if it doesn't work out, we can always reset it. And if you want more details on how this process works, I will have links down in the video's description, uh, the original video where I first did this patina. And with that, she is done, at least for now. So, first of all, super happy with how this patina turned out. Uh, a few tricks that I use to get this effect. Trick number one, plastic wrap. You notice that the start of this patina process, or rather when I was letting things sit to start curing, I had a plastic film set across the top of this. This was to attempt to pull a little bit more of the, uh, the salt and plant food mixture that I had in different spots on the plate so that it looked like it was sort of naturally weathered without there being sort of intentional looking patterns. The first version of this did not turn out quite like I wanted it to, and I accidentally rinsed off too much of the patina when I was canceling the process. That said, this is layered over that first attempt at creating this. Another trick that worked out is uh, bamboo uh, shish kebab skewers. I used these instead of something more abrasive to get inside uh, the sockets for where the switches plug in to get out any of the excess buildup in there because that does impact whether or not your switches will effectively fit into these sockets. And uh, this is gentle enough that it's obviously not gonna mar up the metal, but it's abrasive enough that when you start digging it into the metal and the metal starts shaping the outside of the skewer here, it does start uh, getting into all the little nooks and crannies and pulling up all of that uh, corrosion that happened. And we even managed to get a bit of a patina going on underneath. This was not intentional. This is just sort of the, um, the drippings from the surface that I was originally working on. But I did also seal this side of the, of, the, uh, of the switch plate just to make sure I didn't get that corrosion continuing to spread and develop out of sight, out of mind, because that could potentially produce uh, some bad results. 
Now this unfortunately is why I do have to put things on hold for right now. Again, I am still waiting on Milky Way Voynich to come in. I've been hearing some good things about where things are setting with the samples that are being sent in. I think there's only one more major issue that needs to be corrected with the cap set. I also need to figure out the stabilizer situation for this board. So stay tuned for more updates on that. And if you want to see me work on this and other keyboard projects live, make sure you're following me on Twitter so you catch every time I go live on either Twitch or YouTube. Also, if you want to catch some behind the scenes stuff, make sure you stop by our coffee page. None of it, anything there will ever be behind a paywall. That's just another way for you all to see sort of what's going on on the other side of the camera. And as always, we'll catch you all next time. One more time, huge shout out and thank you to SM Keyboards for making such a beautiful stacked acrylic case. Thanks to Sneakbox for selling us the PCBs to make this project possible. And thanks to you all for watching. Take care.